Now, when it comes to organizing and storing photos on my phone, I use Google Photos. It's free and easy to use. It's got lots of features to help you organize, share and manage your photos. And because it's Google, it syncs seamlessly with your Google account on all devices. So whether you want to back up your photos, organize them into albums, or even search for that one perfect picture in seconds, then Google Photos could be just what you need. And I'm going to show you how to use it in this video. So if you're ready, then let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is download the Google Photos app onto your phone. So if you're on Android, then you go to the Google Play Store or the App Store if you're on an iPhone. Now you can see I've already got it downloaded on my phone, but basically you just follow the on-screen prompts to enable backup and sync. So it will ask you to select a backup quality of either the original or storage saver. It's up to you which you want to use. Personally, I use the storage saver as it still keeps it high quality, but just not as high as the original version. It will also ask you to choose whether to back up your photos using Wi-Fi only or Wi-Fi and mobile data. Again, it's up to you, but I would recommend using Wi-Fi only so that it won't eat into your data plan. So when you're in Google Photos, this is the interface. This is what you'll see to begin with. Now I'm on an old Android phone, so your display might look slightly different, but the options and choices should still be the same as what I'm showing you. So the navigation along the bottom, the first button is Photos. This is what you land on when you open the app and it's where all of your photos are displayed. They're listed in reverse chronological order. So the most recent ones are at the top of the screen and you need to scroll down if you want to look at any older photos. If you click on the three dots over on the right hand side, it brings up a layout menu. And this is where you can choose how you want your photos to be laid out. So you can have them comfortable, which looks like this. You can choose to lay them out by day. And the final option is by month, which is what I'm going to keep it as anyway. So we've got the all of January photos, December photos, November, etc. So to look at an individual photo, simply tap on the photo and you'll see some icons across the top and the bottom of the photo. So starting in the top right corner, if you have Chromecast, then you'll see the cast to icon which lets you stream your pictures from your device to your TV. If you don't have a Chromecast, then this icon won't be there. Next, you've got the star icon. So this adds the photo to your favorites folder. Then you've got the three dots for more options. So you can click on there and you can see some more options have appeared, including adding the photo to an album, moving it to the archive folder, deleting it from the device, creating a new highlight video or collage, moving it to a locked folder, and then you can use as, which brings up options to use it as your wallpaper for your device or profile image for WhatsApp or contacts. You can create a slideshow and the final option lets you print the photo. You can edit the details of the photo itself, so you can give it a title and add a caption, and you've also got these editing effects here as well. So if we go back to the opened view of the photo, the icons along the bottom, will let you share the photo with others. You can edit the photo so that you adjust the brightness, the contrast. You've got tools to add blur and magic eraser. You can add filters, the markup and more. You can use Google Lens if you want to identify a, spe a specific item on the photo, which will then bring up more information about the item. And the final option is the bin or the trash where you can delete the photo. If you've got backup turned on, then this will remove the photo from the device as well as Google Photos. Now you may have a section above your actual photos at the very top where it shows memories of a certain time or a theme. So Google Photos will automatically create these memories for you and you can switch them off if you don't want to see them. To do that, simply click on your profile picture in the top right corner here, then select Photo Settings. As you can see, this is where you access all the settings for Google Photos and it is worth spending a bit of time here just checking that it's set up how you want it to be. So going back to turning off memories, you need to click on preferences and then click on memories. The top section is where you can hide people and pets or dates. So this is especially useful if you've lost someone close to you or a family pet and you're just not ready to start seeing their photos pop up on your phone. You can also click on memory types here and this is where you can switch them all off. So you just toggle the buttons to off and then click the back arrow to get back to your main photos screen again. 
and you should no longer have any memories showing above the photos. You can also access memories by clicking the button at the bottom called memories. So this has given me memories of specific days. If you scroll down, you can see there are even more memories added and you can scroll across here for some more as well. If you want to keep these, you can edit the title of the memory by clicking on the three dots here next to the title, going to edit title, and then just typing in a new name there. If you want to add a memory yourself, simply click on add memory at the top here and then click create new and you just go through and choose the photos that you want to include. Once you've selected the photos you want to include, click add in the top right corner here. You can give the memory a name and you can add in a description of why this memory was important to you. And then once you're done, you click on this, the tick in the, in the top left corner here and that will save it. So we just go back to the main screen and moving on from memories, you've got the next option along is collections. So this is where you can access any of the albums that you've already created. You've got a favorites folder, which contains any photos that you've starred. You've also got the bin and the trash folder and any collections that Google Photos has automatically created for you. So collections are things like people and pets, documents and places. Now, if we click on albums, these are albums that I've created myself. To create a new album, simply click on the plus symbol in the top right corner here give the album a name, if I just type in test, add a description if you want to, and then click on select photos and start choosing photos that you want to be included in that album. Once you're done, click on add in the top right corner here. And this is the album that we've just created. So you can now click on the three dots in this top right corner for more options. And here you can choose an album cover. So you select an image, for the cover of your album. You can also delete the album completely, but the photos and videos will stay in Google Photos. And if you click on options here, you can set your link sharing permissions, which I'll go through later on in this video. Also, it's worth noting that anything you do here on your phone will automatically be synced to Google Photos on your computer if you use it on desktop as well. So I'm just gonna go back to the main albums list. So if you click on where it says album title with the two arrows, this is where you can change how you want to sort the albums. You can sort them by last modified, you can have them in alphabetical order of album title or in date order of the most recent photo. So I'm just gonna leave it as album title. You can also change how you view the layout of the album albums by clicking on the icon over on the right hand side here. You can choose between list view or grid view. So if we go back to the main screen again, and the final option along the bottom is search. Now the search function is very good. You can simply type in a keyword. So if I type in something like um, sunrise, type in sunrise and you can see it's brought up all the photos that contain the sunrise but it's taken into account the time of day that I've that I've um, taken the photos as well. You can also search by place name so I'm just going to type in here the heath you can see I've got a recent search here of the heath so I'm going to type in that and you can see it's brought up photos here of any photos taken in the location of the heath. You can see there's a map at the top of the screen and you can click on any of the highlighted areas and it takes you to the photos that were taken in that specific area. If you click on the three dots in the top right corner here, you can change it so that you're looking at a satellite image of the heath instead. It's very handy. And if I just go back to photos to take you back to the main dashboard. So that's the navigation of Google Photos. Now we're gonna look at backing up your photos. So if you want to check that your photos on your device are being backed up in Google Photos, click on your profile image in the top right corner to access the settings. Click on photo settings and then click backup, which is the first option. Make sure the option to backup your photos from this device is switched on and that it's going to the correct Google account. You can also select the backup quality here. So you've got between original, original quality and storage saver. And if you use Wi-Fi and mobile data to back up, then you can select your daily limit of mobile data usage. And you can choose whether you want other folders on your device to be backed up as well by selecting backup device folders and switching those to on. I'm just going to go back to the main Google Photos page. 
So Google Photos makes it really easy to share any of your photos or videos with other people. Simply tap on a photo to open it or tap and hold to select it and then click on share that appears at the bottom here. Now you can choose how you want to share it. So you can create a shareable link, which is a URL that you can use anywhere. So if you wanted to include that in the description of a YouTube video, for example, then you could just paste the link there. You can also share it directly through your phone by clicking on one of the apps here at the bottom or click on more to open up even more options. And it works the same with your albums too. So go to collections at the bottom here, click into your albums, click the album that you want to share. I'm just going to click onto that one. Click on the three dots in the top right corner, go to options and turn on the link sharing option here. Just toggle that to on. And you now have more options here. So you get notifications about any new activity to the album. You can share photo locations. You can let others add their own photos to this album. You can um, let others comment or like the photos in the album. You've also got um, a link here that you can copy and you can just toggle the, any of these on and off depending on, on the permissions that you want to include. You can also invite people. So if you want to share the album with a certain contact, you can click on invite people here and it will show a list of suggestions at the very bottom. Scroll to the left until you see the more button. Click on there and it will bring up a list of your contacts and you can just choose who you want to invite to the album and then click on add. So now you'll see some additional icons underneath the description of the album. There'll be, there'll be profile images of the specific people that you've invited to join the album. And there'll also be the link icon, which means a link has been created for you to share with anybody. If you click on the link icon now, it opens up the options as before. So you can quickly go in and toggle on and off those options that we just looked at. If you scroll down, these are the people that you've um, invited to share the album with. And you can also remove anybody you've invited by clicking on the three dots to the right of their name and click remove person. If you want to make the album private again, then you simply click on the, the link icon underneath the description. And where it says link sharing, you can just untick that. So you're switching that off. Anybody that's invited will still be able to see this album, but you can also create a new link later on as well. So I'm just gonna say delete link, go back. So now there's no link with it, but you can still share it with, with specific people if you want to. So if we just go back to the main albums page again and go back to photos, to the main dashboard. So next I want to look at archiving and deleting photos. So much like with your Gmail and Google Drive, you'll want to keep on top of your storage in Google Photos. And one way of doing that is by deleting photos that you no longer want. So if you've got backup turned on, then deleting photos and videos from Google Photos will also delete the same items from your device. If you just want to delete photos from Google Photos, then make sure backup is switched off first. So to select multiple photos, tap and hold on one photo and then tap the others that you want to select and then click on the trash or the bin icon that appears at the bottom of the screen. So you'll get a notification telling you what this means and the amount of storage that will be recovered by deleting them. And then to confirm that you just click on move to bin and then I'm moved. If you delete an item that's backed up in Google Photos, then it will stay in your trash or your bin folder for 60 days before being permanently deleted. If you delete an item without it being backed up, then it stays in your trash for 30 days. To access this folder, click on collections across the bottom, scroll to the top and then click on the bin or the trash button at the very top here. And you can see this is a list of the photos that have been deleted. So to restore any deleted items, click on select at the top and then choose the items that you want to be restored and click on restored in the bottom right corner. Confirm that you do want to restore them. They will then be placed back in the photos page. You can also quickly empty the bin by clicking the three dots in the top right corner here and click on empty bin. If you no longer want to see an item in your Google Photos gallery view, but don't want to delete it, you can move it to the archived folder. So when you move items to archive, you'll still be able to find them in any of the albums that were added to. And you can also find them in search results and folders on your device. Archived items also still count towards your storage space. So to archive an item, tap and hold on the photo that you want to archive, then choose move to archive along the bottom here. 
and that's it. It's now been archived, it's been removed, it's dis disappeared from your photo screen and it's now in the archived folder. So to access archive, click on collections, scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll see the archive folder is listed here. If you access the archive folder regularly, then it might also be found at the very top of the screen. If you want to unarchive any items, simply tap and hold on the item, click on the three dots in the top right corner and then click unarchive and the item will now be back in your photos view. Now always remember that if you also use Google Photos on your desktop, then everything you do in the app on your phone will automatically be synced to your desktop Google's account as well. So let me know in the comments if you use Google Photos and don't forget if you have any questions, just ask. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.